Hey everybody, welcome back to Controlled Crash. If you're just joining me for the first time, I'm Chris, and my goal is to show that concept art can be for everyone, no matter your skill level. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a simple technique for adding easy and believable water to your landscapes to create stunning images fairly quickly. It's quick, it's effective, and it's a great way to define an environment piece with very little effort. In fact, it's so simple, I probably should have figured it out sooner than I did. Now, water can be a difficult challenge for even seasoned artists, since its properties and appearance change depending on the environment, but we're most familiar with it as a reflective surface that acts as a mirror. You can try this technique as a step-by-step, -step, or you can add this to your existing workflow to spice it up. Let's jump in. Before I can add water, I first need to sketch a basic scene. To start with, I'm going to block in a very simple rocky mountain shape using a lasso and a hard brush. I have in my head a sort of aurora borealis northern glacier image, so I'm going to lay in a greenish blue background with some glow on the horizon using a soft brush. Switching to a chunky chalk brush, I'm putting down some general texture information for the main rock using a clipping mask on top of my mountain layer. The point is to work quickly and loosely here since all I need are some broad shapes. I can refine the rest later. On top of that, I'm using a snow layer in a color that's close to the sky since this is a nighttime scene, so all that white snow is reflecting the available light. I can use a hard brush to erase back what I don't want to create the appearance of some higher frequency rock detail. I'm adding some more fiddly detail to the top and the side of the mountain with another clipping mask. Now I'll block in some background mountains in dark blue with the lasso tool. I don't need much detail to define them, so I can add some simple highlights with the chalk brush. Oftentimes I change the composition after the fact. Uh, you can easily move and stretch things around to suit your tastes. Now I want to block in a foreground shape where I can place a figure, again with a lasso and a chalk brush. I know I want a sci-fi scene, so I'm going to add in my little astronaut here looking over the landscape. Since he's so small, he doesn't need much detail at all. A few low highlights will give me what I want. And since he's a spaceman, he needs some glowing accents. Just a touch more detail work here on the landscape before I'm ready. Since I've added the highest frequency detail on the Spaceman, I want to add some other high frequency detail around the piece to attract the viewer's eye. I'm also adding some slight overlay highlights using value blending, just to hit the snow and not the darker rock. Okay, here we go. Now that the landscape is blocked in, I'm taking a hard white brush on a new layer and sketching in where I want water to go. I make it smaller near the horizon to account for perspective, and I also want some big bold shapes in the foreground to add some dynamic composition. Bear in mind that it won't be white, I'm just using that to block in. But I want to make sure my edges are razor sharp and not soft at all. Now the water's blocked in, I can turn off my foreground layer and my water mask to take a merged copy of the entire scene. I turn my mask back on and add this copy as a clipping mask on top of it. Then the trick is to flip it vertically. This gives me a mirror copy of my midground and my background, but contained within the white mask. I can move it up and down to change the composition. The next thing I want to do is motion blur it vertically. This mimics the surface noise of the water and the fact that it's not a true mirror. 
Once that reflected layer is in place, you can easily alter the white mask underneath it to change the shape of the water without changing the reflection, adding or replacing easily with the brush or eraser. The other thing you can do is add another clipping mask on screen or one of the other additive blending modes to show the surface of the water receiving light itself rather than just reflecting the light around it. Once this is done, the rest of the composition is up to you. Here I've decided that I'd like to see some auroras in the sky, so I'm going to block that in with a chalk brush. Since the water will need to reflect whatever I have in my scene, anything I add will need to be updated in the reflection, which you'll see me do a few times. You can do a similar vertical motion blur with the aurora to give it a streaked look and disguise the brush strokes. Here I'm going back in and adding some shadows around the edges of the landscape underneath the water layer to give some volume to the land instead of it looking perfectly flat. Now I can update my mirror layer with a new copy merge to show the updated sky. Remember to blur it vertically to soften it. Now I'm adding just a touch of foreground haze between the figure and the landscape to help add depth. I'm also using a simple trick for creating stars. Add noise, blur, and use levels to get a non-uniform speckle of pinbricks. Make sure your layer mode is set to screen for this to work. Then make sure you don't have any stars over your background terrain. Here again, I'm updating my reflection to include the stars. Once I'm reasonably happy with the image, I'll do a copy merge and add a little vignette using lens correction. You can also add chromatic aberration, which is where the RGB channels of your image drift toward the outside, which mimics a real-world camera. You'll see it in a lot of photoreal pieces. Here now, I've decided I want to add a few more things, namely a huge planet in the sky. I'll use a circular selection, make sure that it's behind my aurora, but in front of my stars. I can use a soft brush to add a glow, and even another smaller moon off to the side. Possibly in a nice complementary color to add some color interest. Now I want to add a spaceship, so we'll start with the engine trail. I like the neon pink and green, so I'll stick with pink. I want a nice subtle curve for the engine trail, so I'll use a brush stroke and then distort it into perspective to get the shape I want. Now I want to block in the ship, bearing in mind that the lighting here will be fairly dark.
Now that I've got all that, I'm going to want to update my mirror image again for the last time. And I'll add the vignette and aberration on top as a final step. And there you have it, final image. The footage was sped up, but the whole painting took less than an hour, and most of that was just me fiddling around that I ended up cutting out. This technique is a simple, powerful tool for adding to your landscapes, and it can be used to create simple small scenes or huge epic vistas. The important thing to remember is not this specific technique, but that even seasoned artists rely on simple tricks to solve complex problems with their pieces and really take them to the next level. Oftentimes it's simpler than you think. And if they can do it, you can do it too, one trick at a time. The best thing you can do for yourself is try a new trick, shake up your process, and rethink the things that you thought were supposed to be difficult. You may surprise yourself. So thanks for joining me. Post any questions in the comments. And until next time, go make worlds.